Hello dear friends, welcome back at Lit E City, the one-stop YouTube channel about English literature. The current series discuss post-colonial dramas. Here we study, we understand, we read about those great important dramas written by writers belonging to the prior colonies, the empire what we say and how these dramas present. Uh, we can say the evolvement or we can say the predicament of the uh, native people before colonization, during colonization and after colonization. And today the play which we will discuss here is No Sugar by Jack Davis. These are some key facts before we start the uh, critical examination of the play. It is written by Jack Davis. He is one of very important, uh, we can say the native Australian writer who has uh, brought to the front the problem and all kind of, we can say, exploitation uh, shared by, suffered by the native Australian population by the British uh, colonization. It was first produced in 1985. The setting is Western Australia and if we talk about genre, it is obviously uh, we can say an allegory. It is a historical drama because there are uh, some event, reference to some event that were that really happened during this uh, period and there are even one or two characters which are true historical characters. Uh, let's have uh, a brief info about the writer, the author, Jack Davis. He is an Australian Aboriginal. Aboriginal means native Australian playwright, poet and activist. He belongs to the Western Australian Nyunga tribe, the tri we can say one of the native tribes. In 1973, he became editor of the Aboriginal cultural magazine identity very important magazine which basically forefronted which uh, which basically discuss the issues related with the uh, the aboriginals and uh, the app original publications foundation it was the trust which promoted the writings the cultural artifacts of the aboriginal population he combined his own writing with active support for Aboriginal artistic endeavors for the rest of his life. Davis, his first full-length play, Clark, it is a documentary on the history of Aboriginals in Western Australia and it was first produced in 1979. So we can say he uh, throughout his life he tried to uh, portray the life of the Aboriginal in different shades uh, um, of life. Dear friends, uh, before we dive into the play, it's a humble request to subscribe, support, share this channel and also always give your very important critical insights how we can improve the quality of this channel. Okay, moving ahead, uh, let's have uh, the background information related with the play. No sugar, this play takes over the course of four years. So the duration is uh, the four year that is 1930 to 1934. This basically, though the setting is Western Australia, these years represent the peak of worldwide Great Depression, the economic re uh, recession period, a period of global economic crisis. So we can say its impact, the impact of global uh, economic recession on the natives in Australia. So Jack Davis has tried to portray it. It is the second of Davis firstborn trilogy. Obviously, the, uh, tri the name firstborn here refers to the, the natives, the aboriginals, and he depicts the everyday lives of aboriginal families over the course of 20th century, how they face the gradual, uh, we can say, geographical and political, cultural changes which affected their life a lot. 
the other two plays of this trilogy are the dreamers which was in 1982 and barrington this is the australian local australian world smell the wind it was produced in 1989 uh, you can see a bit pictures which will tell you how the great depression of this particular period which started from America then spread to the whole of the world. It affected lives of the million people. They become unemployed. There was a lot of movement from uh, rural areas to the urban areas and how uh, we can say the whole world was affected and especially the colonies, the colonized people, they have the double impact of this recession and also uh, as I have already told you that there are some real historical references. The one is Moore River Native Settlement where the natives were kept during their colonized period. How British people keep them aloof from the, uh, we can say, British colonies. So these are some pictures which tell you some story. Uh, let us have a brief introduction, a brief insight into the aboriginal problem of that time. Prior to the British colonization, more than 500 indigenous groups inhabited the Australian continent and there were almost 750,000 7, 7, 7, 7, people in total. They were spread throughout Western Australia. In 1977, in his maiden Pacific voyage, James Cook, he claimed the position of east coast of Australia uh, and for the British crown. And when he came back to uh, the, his homeland, Britain, he made a proposal and British uh, uh, authorities were very much interested in establishing a penal colony there. Look, the British prisons, they were already overcrowded and they found it a very lucrative idea to have a place an island where they can keep the convicts and that is why it was developed as a we can say penal colony on january 26 1788 captain arthur phillips he guides total 11 british ships and there were thousands of convicts and they came to the colony of new south wales nsw and thus australia the modern australia the colonized australia was founded it eventually 26 january became uh, commemorated as australia day once again in this play also there is reference to the australian day and its of Official celebration. Ten years after 1788, it is estimated that the indigenous population of Australia was reduced to 10%, uh, reduced by 90%. There were many, uh, we can say, call, uh, reasons behind it. There were direct conflict between the indigenous native and uh, the colonizers. There were some diseases spread by this, we can say, foreign touch. There were obviously, we can uh, we know that uh, the period was, uh, there were a lot of, uh, we can say, operation that, that caused these native people to uh, go out of their uh, places. From the beginning of colonization, indigenous people continually resisted the violation of their rights to land and its impact on indigenous cultures and communities. So basically this play also shows that even to the very minimum scale, there were always a lot of friction, a lot of we can say resistance against the colonizing powers. Uh, coming to the play, if we talk about the characters, there is the protagonist is Jimmy Monday. He is, a, we can say, a middle-aged man and an Aboriginal Australian. He is a very vociferous man who always uh, speaks against uh, exploitation. Then we have uh, Millie, uh, Millie Millimura. She is sister of Jimmy. Then we have Grand Monday. She is mother of both Jimmy and Millie. She is like a matriarch of the family. Keep uh, she keeps the whole family together. Uh, we have Sam Millimura. Millimura. Uh, he is husband to Millie. 
then we have uh, Joe Milimura the, he is the eldest son of Sam and Millie and he is very fond of his uncle Jimmy he tries to uh, copy his step then we have white people Aubrey Neville he is the chief protector of aborigines in uh, western australia which is a um, government official position and ns neil who is superintendent of the moor river native settlement where the aboriginals are kept and vigil uh, vigilated over this is a brief character map of the play as you can see gran uh, monday she is the matriarch and she has jimmy and millie uh, the both children millie she is married to sam and they have three children joe sissy and david and now joe is very much fascinated by the character of uh, his uncle jimmy this is millie mora monday family and aboriginal and these are white ones navel uh, and as neil his wife metro neil she also contribute to the uh, we can say administration of the camp there is sister eileen who used to teach uh, the children of these aboriginals a very interesting character uh, which which shows the impact of post colonization uh, sorry colonization is billy kimberley though he is one of the aboriginal he belongs to a different clan but he works for the whites he works for navel and how this shapes his identity it is very important to uh, observe in the play let's go through the story australia like the rest of the world is suffering from the great depression melimora mande family which has jimmy sam milly grand joe sissy david they live on the government well of uh, aboriginal reserve in the city of northam they all are we can say out of any sort of employment they totally depend upon the, uh, the, the facilities provided by the by the officials they survive the hard times through limited ration rationing is a very key factor of keeping the uh, local people the native peoples under control little money earned by jimmy sam and joe by doing odd jobs even in the opening scene we come across many references of discrimination towards the native sissy she complains to her mother that the grocer gives her and her siblings little shriveled ones the piece of bread and while the white children receive big fat ones you can say the discrimination up to the every level down to uh, we can say the lowest level there is a discrimination between the aboriginals and the white ones the aboriginal australians are not allowed to drink alcohol there is local sergeant carol he interrogates frank who is a white farmer and he is basically supplying uh, alcohol to the aboriginal man and he tells him that yes he gave it to jimmy jimmy has been found drunk and carol warns frank that next time they both will be arrested Neville who works at government of western australia fisheries forestries wildlife and aborigines you can see how they are put together for the white people aboriginal are equal to or we can say last in priority to fisheries forestries wildlife this is very important the naming of the department and he plans as a cost saving measure to deprive the nations of the natives of the food they need to survive already it is period of uh, depressed economic recession and he wants to create some so, uh, he wants to save some costing so he basically cut uh, the um, the amount of the quantity of their rations which is already very meager now uh, navel is more interested in civilizing the aboriginals of australia because he sees making them appear more western therefore more white it is a common theme in all kind of we can say colonizing process making the natives like westerners and thus setting west as the standard Uh, at the government well reserve milimura mande family is having dinner and frank is their guest and there is we can say a, a drunk in their drunken state jimmy picks a fight with joe and milly 
which grand uh, jo and mili and grant somehow manages to control but because of this fight basically the complaint is lost and jimmy and sam they are put into jail where jimmy still tries to defy both the constable and the sergeant though jo 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 here tries to basically um, uh, be very impassive and meek but jimmy never forget to assert his identity obviously frank is given only 6 week imprisonment jimmy 3 months with hard labor, labor because sam is very weak uh, sorry meek he is levied just levied a fine and given a period of 5 uh, to 6 week to um, put uh, this fine back at the government well deserved sissy is feeling sick and the whole family tries to get medical care for her even though sam doesn't want to do extra work but he understands that he must in order to help save his daughter so he goes find some work bring some medicines and they try to um, uh, keep uh, sissy on track Naval claims that the Milimura Mande family, as well as the rest of Aboriginal community, has scabies. Now, scabies is a highly contagious skin infection, and now because of this, they will all be transferred uh, to the Moor River Native Settlement. Now, just like herd of animals, the official decides that from one place which uh, they have made their base, they will be transferred to the other base. Another thing is that it is basically uh, not true that these people have scabies. Only Navel is fed up of their uh, um, settlement, and he wants to make the area free of any Aboriginal. they are forced to relocate they are also forced to leave behind item which are potentially precious to them which they have very we can say laboriously collected but they are forced to uh, leave them behind the sergeant comes and informs the family that they are under medical quarantine does have to be relocated but jimmy is skeptical of this claim he doesn't believe that the family is suffering from scabies he suspects that the white australians don't want the aboriginal family in their town though the dogs must be left behind but grand threatens to not to go without her pet dog wow wow and uh, this is the name of her pet dog she knows that police because if uh, she knows that if she leaves uh, wow wow behind the police will kill him the sergeant finally gives in and tells grand she can keep the dog at moor river native settlement um they have shifted to the new base milimura mande family they meets billy who is an ab original police officer working for the settlement uh, so he is basically an aboriginal but in service of the empire of the colonizers they also meet two sisters mary and topsy jo is instantly attracted towards mary the local matron who is wife of neil neil is the superintendent of the moor river native settlement she inspects the family for scabies but finds everyone without the disease billy reveals to him that the family has many dogs with them and this causes joe david and sissy to curse at him because they uh, trusted him they have hosted him they have trusted him as one of the natives but as an official he fulfills his duty and tells the superintendent tells neil that family has some dogs with them jo who is very much attracted towards mary he wants to marry her but they need neil's permission and they fear they will not get it because neil he himself is interested in this local girl now comes the angle of sexual exploitation of the native women neil time to time exploits them rapes them and there are many incidents which are referred in the play they decide to elope and the family 
दो कंसर्न फॉर जो सेफ्टी सपोर्ट इज डिसीजन द न्यूज रीच इज नील ही इज वेरी मच डेस्परेट ही आस्क बील टू बिली टू ट्रैक दम डाउन मैटर नील फील्स फ्रस्ट्रेटेड एट हर हजबेंड्स इंटरेस्ट इन कैचिंग मैरी एनी हाउ शी नोज दैट द इंटेंशन ऑफ हर हजबेंड इज बियॉन्ड हर जस्ट बियॉन्ड हर वी कैन से ऑफिशियल अप्रोच एंड एक्चुअली ही वॉन्ट्स मैरी Billy is able to track them, but Joe overcomes him and even uses his own handcuffs, Billy's handcuffs, uh, to stop him, to restrain him. And they both, Mary and Joe, catch a train running. Billy, though, uh, while they board the train, they throw the key the of the handcuff to uh, Billy. So Billy is able to return to the office. And uh, when he tells the incident to Neil, Neil yells at him for his incompetency and failure. Joe and Mary they once again arrive at their original place, government well of ab ab Aboriginal reserve, and now it is deserted, devastated. There is nothing left anymore. Sergeant Carroll he meets them and informs that Joe he no more belongs to here and wouldn't get anything from the local authorities. When Joe asks for some, uh, asks for some ration, uh, basically Carroll says no, he is not entitled for. For it later sergeant shows a warrant for joe's arrest and in a shocked state joe's tell them whereabouts of mary because mary doesn't belong to, uh, to this particular camp originally uh, so everyone is interested to send her back neville he is uh, giving a speech as royal at the royal western australian historical society where he recounts the history of the colonization and he concludes his speech by bringing up the genocide of aboriginal people in tasmania the very infamous event in the history which once had a native population of 6000 and in the end only one was left alive the aboriginal children uh, at moor uh, settlement they are taught every sunday by sister eileen in western style she has she has rather a sympathetic heart towards these people she want them to read books but uh, books like bible but once again we can see even though she is sympathetic her cause is basically uh, helping the western colonies to establish their canon Billy brings Mary into Neil's office, but he is ordered to wait outside while they talk. When Mary refuses to cooperate, she is brutally whipped. Afterward, the family takes care of her. A letter from imprisoned Joe also arrives. So Mary is again with the family. Neil criticizes Sister Eileen for providing books to the Aboriginal kids and threatens to send her to another settlement by the Gibson Desert. Now, there are celebration of Australia Day in 1934 on 26 January. Neville once again gives a speech praising the empire for providing ample food to the natives at this time. Now, in the end, when they are singing a hymn, the natives chime in with a parody causing, uh, causing an uproar. Jimmy begins to shout about the discriminative policies and in a state of excitement, collapses on the ground and dies. Sam and Millie ask Neil permission to allow Joe to attend his uncle's funeral but obviously Neil refuses. Mary, with the help of Graham, delivers baby. Joe returns after some time. He has earned some money working in prison. He comes to know about Neil's treatment of Mary and Rage. He wants to confront him, but the family calms him down because they know what the outcome would be. Joe visits Neil, who shows him a document which states that Joe and Mary can leave Moor River, but with the condition that they do not return to Northam. Although Millie and family have very little, they give what they can to me, me, make Mary and Joe's journey a little easier. Grand sings as Joe and Mary pack up and leave the camp with their baby. The title, dear friends, No Sugar is very symbolical because sugar is uh, one of the basic commodities. It is also, we can say, a symbol of sweetness. 
नो शुगर सो एट द सेम टाइम कीप टू पॉइंट ऑन द फोर फ्रंट द बिटरनेस एंड द स्केरसिटी फॉर द नेटिव पीपल द सॉन्ग विच विच इज संग बाय ग्रैंड इन द एंड इज ऑल्सो वी कैन से सॉन्ग ऑफ वर्निंग फॉर द कपल ऑफ ऑल द वी कैन से हार्डशिप्स दे विल फेस इन देयर जर्नी सो इट्स अ वेरी मूविंग प्ले बाय जैक डेविस विच shows which showcases the pathetic uh, condition of the native people okay dear friends that's all for today's class keep watching keep supporting we will meet in another uh, for another and exciting drama thank you dear friends